and we'll welcome everyone to our evening gospel outreach at the People's Church, Newton Abbey. You know, we are delighted that you have chosen to spend some time with us tonight. Thank you for doing that. It's great to have you with us as we look to the Lord again on this his day, the day when we honour him and we give him our time and we get near to the Lord in a special way. We thank God for our time in the sanctuary to gather this morning when so many people came and just worshipping the Lord, reaching out unto him, giving him our appreciation, gratitude for his sacrifice, remembering all of that in that beautiful time of communion this morning and also hearing his word as well, taking it on board into ourselves and thank God we can do that. And we've come back again tonight just to hear what the Lord has for us because God always has something for us. Isn't that the truth? Isn't that something to be excited about? God always has something for you. And he's got something for you tonight from his word. And we're going to read a verse that just declares something. It just proposes something to us that we can really take on board and look forward to. And it's just one verse this evening that I want to read from 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9. Now before I read this verse, let me tell you what this little message is called. I've given this short message the title and here's what it is. All this and heaven too. Let me say that to you again. Here's what tonight's message is called. All this and heaven too. And I believe this is really in line with what God's word promises. Let me read to you 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9. And then we're going to pray. But listen to the verse. I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man. What? Here's what it says. The things which God has prepared for those who love him. Listen to it again. I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Oh, I feel a thrill of that. I hope you do too. But we're going to pray because we need the Holy Spirit to guide us right now. Let's just bow our heads in that way of acknowledgement. Father, we come to you again. We thank you again for calling us to yourself. We thank you again that we're, we have a desire to listen to your word, to take it in. We thank you for working on us and bearing long with us and drawing us. And Lord, you're doing that with everyone who is tuning in right now. Will you bless them? Even someone tonight who doesn't know you in that real way of transformation. Lord, may this be the night where your reality enters into their heart. Bless your word that we have read onto our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray and speak to all of us, Lord. Amen. Amen. You know, a short while ago, short time ago, um, I was just flicking through the TV. I don't know if you're like me, but I spent more time flicking through channels, trying to find something, not only to watch, but something appropriate to watch, that's something I'm comfortable watching. And there's so much rubbish out there and, and stuff I don't want to watch. You're probably the same too. And so I'm flicking through these TV channels. And you know what it's like nowadays? You've got stream after stream after stream, list after list after list. And there was a film that was coming soon or was programmed to come. And, and I just caught the title. It was an old film in the 1940s, I think. But the title really gripped me because the title said this, 
All this and heaven too. That's what the film was called. All this and heaven too. Now as I say it was an old film. I didn't watch the film. It was programmed to come on later on or something like that. And I think the actress Betty Davis was in the, the film as well. But the title really made me think all this and heaven too. And it really hit me because as soon as I saw that title, all this and heaven too, I immediately thought about our heavenly father and what he offers and what he has in store. And I began to align that film title to what we have read from 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9. And that's how this message was triggered. Because 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9 says, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Isn't that remarkable? What a statement. What a promise. What a Bible verse. Eye hasn't seen yet. Ear hasn't heard yet. It hasn't even entered into the heart of man. The things that God has prepared for those who love him. This talks about what God has set in store. This talks about of the good things that God has set in store for those who love him. And when I saw that film title, All This and Heaven Too, I thought about that verse. And I thought, more importantly, what our Heavenly Father has set in store. And I believe if anyone can relate to that film title, in a real way, in an honest way, in, in a, a very, very life experience and way, it's the Christian believer. All this and heaven too. Because that describes what God has in store for the Christian believer. Life in this world. Things in this world to enjoy. Things in this world to experience. And then at the end of this world, it doesn't stop. In fact, for the Christian believer, it's only the beginning. And so we can say tonight, all this and heaven too. I tell you, it's great to be a Christian. I tell you, Christian, we ought to be rejoicing. I know life can be difficult. I know we're all challenged and we always will be in this life. But yet the blessing of God reaches us. Where we are, where we're at, even what we're experiencing, the blessing of God still comes through. And you can say tonight, and I can say tonight, all this and heaven too. Isn't God good? Isn't God wonderful? Just for a few minutes, in relation to this, in line with this, I just want for a few minutes for us to understand some of the things God has prepared for us. Remember what the verse says, I hasn't seen nor ear heard nor has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared. God has prepared things for you. I don't know if you realize that, but he loves you with an everlasting love. He loves you. And Pastor George said it a couple of weeks ago, in an unquestionable way. You can't even question it because God has proven that love to you. He loves us eternally, unconditionally. And, I, and because of that, he's prepared things for you. And I just want to highlight some of the things that God has prepared for us. Some of the things we need to know even. And I really want to be simple and I want to keep it simple. Some of the things God has prepared that we can take on board tonight, that we can understand, that we can experience, and then at the end of it say, all this and heaven too. So I hope you get that and I hope you understand where it all fits together, even with this old film title with Betty Davis, the, the actress in it, all this and heaven too. The Christian believer can say that more than anyone else. Here's what God has prepared in the first place. He has prepared a plan for you. 
God has prepared a plan for us. It's called the plan of salvation. It's the plan of God's salvation. And more than anything, this is the best thing that God has done for us. He has prepared a way for us, the way of salvation, the plan of salvation. It's the most important thing God has done for any of us. And let me tell you why that's the truth. Because we are plighted by faults, feelings and flaws that the Bible called sin. And that sin cancels us out. That sin not only plights us, it cancels us out. It disqualifies us. It, it created a great gulf between heaven and us and between God and us. But God has done something. God didn't leave us in our sinfulness. God has provided a plan. It's the greatest thing he's ever done. And when we take this verse, and it's a wonderful verse, I hasn't seen nor are you heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man, the things that God has prepared. I just want to remind us right now, his plan of salvation is the greatest thing he prepared. And if you read the Bible, it was prepared before the foundation of the world. God knew we needed salvation, even before we were born. And then his love, and in his mercy, and then his great compassion he has prepared this the plan of his salvation the good news is tonight you don't have to prepare it for yourself that's the good news you don't have to set it in place you don't need to provide it god has already done that god has done that please listen to what the word of god says again in 1 timothy chapter 1 and verse number 15 and here's how it reads in the niv version here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance christ jesus came into the world to save sinners isn't that something that it says this deserves and demands full acceptance and I love that rendering of that verse. This demands full acceptance. Why? Because Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. It demands full acceptance. It demands your acceptance. Because Jesus Christ came and bled and died for you on the cruel cross of Calvary. And that demands something of you and I. Our full, not only attention, not only understanding, but acceptance. We have to accept that into ourselves. God has provided a way, but you and I need to walk in it. Thank God, Christian, for the day when you began to walk in God's way. Thank God for what happened when you done that, because your life was changed. Your direction was changed. Your whole personality was changed. You were on the right way. You know, Jesus said one day, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And that is so true. But many of us as Christians have found out Jesus is not only the way in, he's also the way out. He got us out of stuff to bring us in. He's the way out as well as the way in. God has prepared a way. God has prepared a plan. No one needs to be offended at the fact that they are sinners. Because we all are. And we all fall short of the glory of God. We all miss the mark. But God knows that too. And so he has provided a way. He has prepared a plan. The plan of his salvation. And that plan is detailed tonight. That plan is set tonight. It cannot be altered. It cannot be sidetracked. It cannot be taken and, and edited and then given back again. No, it's a set plan. It's not based or centered on what we can do, but on what his son has already done. Through his death on the cross, he took our sins and our sorrows. He made them his very own, then suffered and died on Calvary for you 
on for me for every wrong for every lie and every violation of God's law Jesus paid it all Jesus paid it all there are some who are earnestly and it's commendable this night because they're earnestly drawing near to God and I've met people like this over the years and and, and, and they're very legitimate. They're very real. People seeking God. The reality of him. What life is all about. And they draw near the things of God in an honest way. In a true way. But yet they need to know they will not get any further. They will not fully understand the fullness of God until they accept his prepared plan of salvation for their lives. Please get that. Please take that on board. God has prepared something and you have to accept it. That's why we read from what it says. This is a trustworthy saying. Worthy and demands all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. You're not going to get anywhere with God until you accept his plan of salvation. Until you buy to it. and Until you submit to it. I had to do that. I had to lay down all my idea, ideas. All my philosophies. Ideologies. All of that. Whatever you want to call it. They had to be laid down. They had to be laid off at the cross of Jesus Christ. Listen. Burdens are lifted there. But burdens ought to be shed there. Leave it at the cross. And listen. Listen. That's a prepared plan for you. And you walk in the reality of that. And you're never the same again. This is what God has prepared in the first place. This is the greatest thing he has prepared. He has prepared a plan for you. And I'll tell you something. When you are saved by the grace of God, there's a joy that comes with that. That's unspeakable and full of glory. It lifts you. It never leaves you. You, you never forget it. We came back this morning at the table of communion where our hearts were poured out because God had prepared a plan for us, a way of salvation. That's what God has prepared. He has prepared a plan and it's wonderful. It makes your life in this world. But he's done something else, of course. The Lord has done something else. Not only that, he has prepared a purpose for you. Oh, please understand this. God has a purpose for you now. God has a purpose for your life. Your life is not a waste. Your life is not a mistake. We're part of a society and an ideology and an evolutionary idea in our society that, that life is pointless, that life is useless that there's no rhyme or reason to it at the end of the day listen that is a lie from hell that is destroying young people that is affecting old and young alike you are made in the image of God himself and he has a purpose for you God has a purpose for you you know I must admit when I was younger I used to think that Christianity was the most negative thing in the world because to me and my understanding of it it was all do's and don'ts and don't do this and don't do the other thing and thou shalt not and you will not do this and you and on and on and on now don't get me wrong at, at times God says no because there's things that can harm you and God says don't go there because that will destroy you don't touch that because that will ruin you God in his love does say no but listen, it's not all that. God has so much to bring you. In fact, his word says he will withhold no good thing from those who love him. And God has a purpose. And to bring into your life that purpose in so many ways, that's, it's absolutely amazing. And here's what God said in his word. Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, God says declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Isn't that incredible? God says, I have plans for you, not to harm you, but to give you hope and a future. And that's what God is laying down. He's got so much to give you. 
He's got so much in this life to give you. He's got a purpose for you every day. He's got something for you to get out of bed for. I listened to a man's testimony this week who messed up in his life, whose life was just a, a rack for so many years, spent time in prison, came out of prison, was lost, but heard the gospel of Jesus Christ and it registered with him. It made sense to him because his life was lost. But Jesus came to seek the lost. And so he opened up to the gospel. That was many years ago. Tonight he works on the Shangle Road. Seeking lost people. He works in a place called the center. On the Shangle Road. And he brings in lost people. And he reaches out to lost people. His life has a purpose. If you had heard his testimony. He was beaming. He's got something to get up for every day. And that's what God has prepared. A purpose for people. A purpose for their lives. A purpose that as we follow that purpose, it, en it enhances our lives. As we follow that purpose, it enhances our families. As we follow that purpose, that purpose enhances our society. There's a knock-on effect. There's a domino effect. As you follow the Lord, there's an influence for good in all around you. I tell you something, nothing compares to what God has prepared for people. Nothing compares to what he can give people. That's why we can say tonight, all this and heaven too. It will bring you fulfillment tonight. It will bring you value tonight. And it will give you a future tonight. This is what God has in store. This is what God has prepared. This is what God has said. A plan. A plan of salvation. But a purpose for now, a purpose for every day, a purpose for your life that's so enriching, so just bringing value to you that, listen, it transcends you even beyond the circumstances of this life. There's nothing like it and you can have it if you haven't had it yet. But I want to tell you one more thing. That God has prepared. And we can't let leave off here. We can't end here without highlighting this. Without saying this. Because remember the title tonight. Of what this message is about. All this and heaven too. All this and heaven too. And that reminds us. That the Lord has not only prepared a plan for you. And a purpose for you. He's preparing a place for us. Oh, listen, he's preparing a place. All this and heaven too. That, that's what God is doing now. Preparing a place. The Lord Jesus said that in John chapter 14. And if I go, I will come again. He says, I go to prepare a place for you. And then he said, and if I go, I, I will come again and take you on to myself. That where I am there, you may be also. All this and heaven too. You know, sometimes I feel like a wee boy. You know, the night I gave my life to the Lord Jesus, I felt like a wee boy that was just overwhelmed with goodness. It was like a thousand Christmas mornings rolled into one because I knew that night I was a child of God now. And I knew that night with God, the sky's the limit. I knew all things were possible. I knew I belonged to him and that done something to me. And sometimes, even to this day, I feel like a little boy who's been so blessed by God, who, who's been so just blessed by the goodness of God. It's just beyond words, struggling to hold the gifts that he gives. And I'll tell you something, God has taught me in this life, always look at the positives, always look for positives, because with God there's always positives. And here's what the Bible says, Blessed be the Lord who daily loads us with benefits, the God of our salvation. And that's what he does. If you're open to receive them, if you're open to see them even, there's many benefits of God. All this 
and heaven too. And I feel like a wee boy sometimes who can hardly hold them because I know God's been good to me and he's good to me every day and I'm grateful for it and I'll live my life indebted to it. But listen, it does something that's thrilling and I praise the Lord for it. But when you think then when this life is over, because it will be soon for us all, you're not going to stay here forever. You're not going to be around forever more. This world isn't even. And when you think at the end, well, what is there now? What lies beyond? What's coming next? I believe in that moment. We'll have that moment even, Christian. And we'll say, you know, the, the hymn writer put it so well. And say, when the death due lies cold on my Brow. What are you going to say when the death dew is cold on your brow? You, can you imagine, envisage that moment? And we have been honoured to be beside sick beds of people in those moments. And we've seen them gaining consciousness and holding on to us as pastors and holding on to family members. We have been so honoured to be beside those beds where people have been in those last moments. Say when the death dew lies cold on my brow. I believe as Christians will say, well, what's coming next? What can I expect now? And I believe God whispers in that moment, you thought this was good in this life. You haven't seen anything yet because it's all this and heaven too. All this and heaven too. Eye hasn't seen, ear hasn't heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those who love him. Can you get that message tonight? Will you let that resonate with you? All this and heaven too. That's why I'm saying, that's why we say time and time and time again, no one can give us what God can. No one can give us. No wonder the songwriter penned the words, nothing compares to the promises I have in you. You know, I came so close in my life of not accepting what he had for me. It frightens me now. I came so close to saying no. I came so close to turning my back on God one more time. And I don't know if I would have got another opportunity. It frightens me when I think about it because he's brought me into the fullness of everything he is. And we walk as Christians in the reality of that every day. But you may be listening tonight and you're still on the fringes. You're still on the circumference. You're still just coming outside the door. Listen, it's time for you to come in. It's time for you to accept and experience and enjoy the fullness of God. And you can do it tonight by praying a prayer from your heart of acceptance and acknowledgement. This message is called All This and Heaven Too. And God has got so, so much for you. God has got something for you, but God has got everything for you. But you need to accept it. And I wonder will you do that tonight, maybe even for the first time. Or maybe you're watching and you know all of this, but you're away from God. Listen, he wants you to come back. Listen, he's still got a place for you because his heart is still st set on you. Maybe you've messed up. Maybe you've wandered away. Listen, he's calling you back tonight. He still loves you. All this and heaven too. You know what that means. And if God has convinced you of that, then you've got to accept it. You've got to reach out to him even tonight. Now we're going to pray. And we're going to pray a prayer to help you, to help someone here. And may it help you. I'm going to pray a line and then wait for you to pray the line afterwards. But mean this from your heart. Say these words from your heart. And open up to the richness and the fullness of God. Even tonight, because he's calling you. Let's pray. You pray. If you feel the Lord speaking to you, you pray this. Before I started this little message, I just said, Lord, I believe this is for someone here tonight. I was so overwhelmed with that conviction. This is for someone tonight. And I'm saying that now in the name of the Lord. Whoever you are, you need to respond right now to the Lord and do it by saying this prayer. Come on, let's pray together. Say after me, Lord, 
I come to you. In the name of your son, the Lord Jesus, will you take me as I am with my faults, my flaws, and my feelings. I believe you love me. I believe you came for me. And I believe you've got something for me. I want that tonight. I want your plan of salvation. I accept it because you've set it for me. I want your purpose to fill my life. And when I end my time here, I want to enter the place that you have prepared for me. Lord, I'm reaching out for it. Lord, I'm calling out for it. Will you hear me? Will you take me? Will you accept me? Because I pray this with all of my heart. Hear my call on the grounds of your word. Because you have said, Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord will be saved. Well, I'm calling, Lord. Will you accept me? In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you, everyone. If you prayed that prayer, please let us know. We just want to encourage you. We just want to build you up. We want to enjoy or rejoice with you. But Christian, listen to it again. All this on heaven too. Can you understand that? I believe you can. All this on heaven too. Only the Lord can bless us like this. Will you rejoice in it this week? We're back tomorrow night for the call to prayer. Keep in touch with us. Let us know your prayer requests early tomorrow so that we can enter them into the call to prayer. And we'll also see you on Wednesday night here in the sanctuary for Bible study. God has been meeting us there. It's been incredible. The word and the worship together. What times we're having here on Wednesday night. God bless you. And if you are restricted, and you can't come to God's house. Well, that's why we do these broadcasts. You're part of us. We want to know your burdens too. We want to pray with you. Keep in touch with us. Thank you for all your encouragement. Thank you for your messages and text messages. And it's just, we're in it together. We go on in the name of the Lord together. Thank God for you. We'll see you soon. But rejoice in the Lord. All this and heaven too. Thank God. Amen. See you soon. Amen.